stand and worship with us, church. your name this morning. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Woo. Bless your name. 
name. I just want to welcome you here this morning. So glad that you're here today. I want to welcome our online audience. Uh, we're not done worshiping. We just got some special guests with us here today. So we're just going to do a quick transition. They're going to come up and lead us in some worship. But can we ask God's blessing over this place today Hallelujah. as we go into in his presence? And bow your heads with me. Raise your hands. Yes, Let's Lord. call out a heaven this morning. Father, we thank yes, you for God, your goodness today. We thank you for your blessings today. Yes. We worship you, God. What an honor and a joy it is to be in your presence here today. God, we believe that we've prepared an open heaven, Lord. We believe that this atmosphere sphere is sufficient, that the sick might be healed, that the depressed might be delivered, that the discouraged might be encouraged, because we are right here in your presence. Come on, somebody. You done got quiet on me now. Help me call on heaven in here today. Come on with your mouth. Come on, help me. Father, we thank you for what you're going to do in this place. Spirit of God, have your way. Spirit of God, have your way. We are so excited about celebrating new life in Christ today. New life in Christ today. Thank you, Lord, that you picked us up from where we were. All of us, all of us, you picked us up from where we were, deterred us from where we were headed, and pointed us into the direction of prosperity and abundant life found in Jesus Christ. We are grateful this morning for your goodness and your mercy. Come on, one more time. Can we praise him because he's a good God? He is a good God. Amen. While these guys are getting ready, why don't you just turn to your neighbor, greet them, welcome them here this morning. Hallelujah. you, but I'm just getting started worshiping, so let's continue. He is worthy and deserving of all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. So if you know the song, please sing along. He's coming on the clouds. He's coming on the clouds. And kings and kingdoms will bow down. Every chain will break as broken arms declare his praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the lion, the lion of Judah. His roaring with power and fighting our battle. So open up the gates. So open up the gates. Make way for the King of Kings. For the God who calls us safe, and He's here to set the captives free. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is a lion. Sins of 
Come on, every voice. And who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Oh, who can stop you, Lord? Oh, who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Oh, who can stop you, Jesus?
They belong to you. God, thank you that we find our victory in you, Jesus, and you alone. See a victory. 
everything that the enemy meant for evil, God turned it around and he used it for his good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Every mistake. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You turn it, it around. You take what the enemy. seen today is victory but maybe today that that phrase is is talking maybe it's relevant to you or your situation I'm going to see a victory in other words maybe you're in the place of contention right now maybe right now you're fighting for victory let me just tell you I believe that victory is coming for you today before we're done maybe you're watching online today maybe you're bound maybe you're struggling maybe you've had a terrible week maybe you failed the worst you've ever failed today victory can come I just want to declare it over this house and over every house this morning come on the Bible says that shouts of joy and victory resound in the camps of the righteous you might not feel righteous this morning but in Christ you don't gotta feel it you are it because of Jesus. Come on, somebody praise him today. I am the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. So if you know you're righteous in Christ, even though your actions this week didn't make you righteous, you can still shout a shout of victory this morning. We declare victory. Why don't you do that over your own life right now? Shout a shout of victory right now. I just want to pray over you right now. I just want to pray. Father, I just want to pray over everybody that's here today, those that are watching online. Right now, we just ask that you would open our hearts this morning. Open our hearts to receive of the Spirit this morning. Open our hearts, open our minds. I come against every demonic force that would try to hinder Spirit of God, what you would try to do in this place this morning. We call you out and we cast you out in the name of Jesus. Every hindering factor, every hindering force, every hindering thought right now. We bind you and cast you out in the name of Jesus. Spirit of God, you will have your way in this place today. We give you thanks for it. 
in Jesus name in Jesus name out of anticipation for what God's going to do in some hearts today can we give him one more hand clap of praise <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah thank you guys thank you um, we're going to just take a moment here and, and do some formalities these guys are going to be coming back uh, so you can be seated for a minute um, we're going to hear some powerful testimonies uh, these guys that we have with us today are called The Fix. This is The Fix Ministry. And uh, that's who they are. Chris and I tried to think back, and I don't know if we ever came to a conclusion, but we were trying to think back to what year it was, how long ago. But one day we were walking out of Sam's Club, and there were some guys outside of the exit who were handing out pamphlets, and I happened to stop to talk to them. She came along shortly. And it was there uh, that the, and the relationship was initiated. We, we gave them a, a, a donation, took their information, and basically they were, they were passing out uh, pamphlets and giving out information about a place where you could go to receive deliverance and healing from addiction. So we took that information. Sometime later, um, one of our friends here uh, needed some help. And so we were able to, to put that information in their hands. That relationship was, was initiated. And uh, so we've kind of had this on and off relationship with this ministry. And we're just super excited to have Pastor Jason Sweezy and the Fix Ministry with us today. So we're going to do this before they come and kind of begin to share from their hearts. We're going to receive our regular morning tithe and offering. At the end of service, we will be receiving a second offering for this ministry. So just be prepared for that. Ushers, if you'll prepare the service. Again, if, you hear, if you're new here maybe and uh, have, have not seen it, we have something called Smart Giving here. Very quick and easy, convenient way to give through text. You can text a dollar amount to that phone number that's on the screen shortly. And uh, you can put a keyword in there if you like. And um, maybe it'll come up here shortly. Anyway, uh, so also if uh, the ushers are going to walk through today, so we've got some room in, in between, so we're not going to be passing the buckets. But if you have an envelope, a check, um, you can drop it in the bucket. I'm just excited about today. I'm excited about what God's going to do in here. Lord, we just thank you again for the privilege to give. Thank you, Lord, for the giver and every gift, Lord. It is, it's a privilege to be able to respond with obedience. And with, with obedience and with thankful hearts, God, we return the tithe and we give offerings today. God, would you take it, bless it, use it to build your kingdom through this house. And, Lord, we thank you for it. the privilege as always to be a part of what you're doing in the day in which we're living. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God is good. Uh, it's a privilege and an honor to be at this church this morning. Um, before we go any further, I'm just going to real briefly just introduce um, a man of God who was a co-founder of this incredible ministry, the Fixed Ministry. Um, he had a great deal and he was an integral part in my, um, my faith and my recovery um, several years ago. So um, I'm going to introduce the executive director and the co-founder of the Fixed Ministry, Program J Pastor Jason Sweezy. Amen. Well, I'm excited to be in the house of God today. I don't know about you guys, but I feel the presence of God here. Re really excited about that. 
Um, it's been a long weekend. Um, we've been staying at Becky and Brandon's uh, house, and uh, we took our kids. And it was, it was, it's been rough. So I know the presence of God is going to um, work. I, I don't know. I, have, have you guys ever been w- woken up by God in the middle of the night? Yeah. Amen. Well, last night it wasn't God. It was my little daughter's foot. Amen. <laughs> But God used that to really um, lay something about this church on my heart. And um, I can't really put a finger on when we started having our relationships. When I worked at New Life, you know, Becky um, Becky and Brandon came in. It's amazing how God will use something as minute as uh, a pamphlet to to really um, use, uh, you know, have develop a relationship so that we can see that. And and it's amazing, too, because Becky and Brandon, um, he came into the program and, gave his life to Christ. I got to watch um, the ma- amazing transformation in his life. And we, we become friends, which is something that usually doesn't happen in ministry. Amen. Right. And very grateful for that. Um, but what God laid on my heart uh, is, is this thing with um, in, in Acts where Peter was in prison and, and uh, the angel of the Lord came in and said, you know, leave. And uh, the, the reason that that happened was the praying church, amen? The, the church was praying for that to happen. And I know that in here, in this church, um, that you guys have been praying for James and Xander and all the guys in there. And we feel that, and um, we appreciate that. We know that that makes a difference. And um, it's just amazing to be able to see what God is doing in all the lives that are here. In fact, really quick, I want to get all the guys that are in the fix um, to stand up really quick, because this really is about them and their testimony, amen? <laughs> Amen. Hey, and this is probably the brochure that you guys picked up at Walmart. That's kind of cool, right, Brandon? <laughs> Amen. So that's uh, it's iron, irony. But we're, we're here to uh, give testimonies. And, and so we're going to do that. Um, the fixed ministry takes people in uh, for a year, uh, house and feeds them, but most importantly gives them a chance to get right with God. Amen. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about, about why it's the fix, but Jesus Christ is the answer, amen? It's not a, it's not a psychiatric drug. It's not a professor. It's not a book. It's not um, some, some hypnotherapy. It's Jesus Christ, amen, and Jesus Christ alone. Um, and it's amazing to be able to see this happen. And, and so today we're going to, uh, you know, allow those testimonies to happen. I'm, I'm going to bring Xander up here really quick. Come on up here, Amen. You know this guy? Yeah. Amen, amen. Uh, amen. I, I'll be honest with you, you know, um, so when we get that phone call about, hey, this guy needs help, um, you know, we do a background check, amen? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> amen. And it was multi-pages. I, I, you know, in my mind, I, I saw this great big, like, huge, beefy guy that was just, te- you know, and, um, you know, uh, Christy kept talking about his heart. And, and his heart, and, and his heart has it just the compassion that he has, and that, that he really, um, you know, will be a blessing if 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 he allowed God to get a hold of him, and, and to be able to see the transformation in that, that you know, God was going to use him in a mighty way. Um, and I'm excited about that. I'm excited that he's um, he's in the fix. We we let him in. Amen. Sometimes you got to just trust God and the Holy Spirit. And um, he he had he got baptized with a thing on. You don't have that anymore, do you? No, I got that off. Oh, amen. Praise God. <laughs> he, it's like Peter. You know, he got set free. Y'all y'all prayed it off. It's, 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 my, gang, it's my gangster leg. Uh, it's gangster leg. Yeah. Amen. So, <laughs> So he got baptized and had that thing on. That was a first for me. I've baptized a thousand people in my life, and this is the first time that he's had to keep the, you know, leg out of the thing so it doesn't get wet. Amen. Um, but God's setting him free. You know, God's setting him free, and not just that, but he's got a mighty plan for his life. And um, man, I get so excited. You know, I feel the presence of God here today. I love seeing the guys come to the altar because that's where I got changed. Amen. And uh, we're just excited, so I'll, I'll shut up, and you can you can tell about what God's doing in your life. How y'all doing? Uh, my name is Alexander Shield. Um, I've been going to Heritage for a little while now. Um, I'm really I'm really blessed to to be here today. Um, I wrote some stuff, uh, but I don't know how much of it I'm going to go off of because honestly, um, my story is not my past; it's my future. Um, so God has really, um, he's really done a mighty work in my life. Um, and it started when I was a little boy. Um, I prayed to God many, many times. But um, 
there was always something that was holding me back, and that was, uh, that was the devil. And he's always tried to attack me. He tried to attack me on the way here um, this whole week leading up to me giving my testimony. Um, but that's how the devil works. He, he doesn't want us to open the eyes of the believers. He wants us to keep silent, and he wants to keep us afraid. Um, and as we understand spiritual warfare, I've grown to know that my whole life has been a battle of, um, of me looking to the wrong things for strength. Um, when I was younger, I, I really was consumed in myself. Um, it's something I still battle with is, is being consumed in myself, and I think we all battle the ego like that. Um, but God is bigger than that, and, and the, the beauty of, of God's work is that we can, we can be a conduit for his mercy and his grace so that he can be um, given the glory. Um, <clears throat> so none of that was written down, but <laughs> uh, so um, from my notes a little bit, um, I'll start kind of at the beginning. When I was, when I was younger, I, I condemned myself for a lot of things. And I was really in bondage in my mind. Um, my parents got divorced, and um, the devil used that as a way to be able to get into my head and tell me that I wasn't good enough. Um, as I grew up, I, I kind of had another experience where I was told that I wasn't good enough um, in first grade, where I was called a liar and a thief for something I didn't do. And that really, um, really kind of messed me up a little bit. So I, I grew up kind of feeling like I wasn't wanted or I wasn't, wasn't good enough for God, and no matter how much I repented, I wasn't going to be um, able to receive his grace. Um, finally, in fifth grade, I picked up a drum, um, a djembe, and at this time, I'd already been playing on pots and pans for a long time. Um, <laughs> my mom knows. And um, something, something broke free in me. Something woke up inside of me, and I felt like, um, I felt like God said, like, this is your gift, you know. Um, but the devil tried to break my spirit by um, trying to steal that from me. Um, the music teacher told me that I had no rhythm. I wasn't able to play drums. Um, and, that, and that got into my head again. And um, so because of those few things um, that happened to me, I felt a great mistrust for authority at a young age. Um, I started, started wanting to um, pave my own way. And I didn't want to listen to anyone. I didn't want to do what someone told me to do, even though I, I might have known it was right. But just because somebody told me to do it, I was going to go against it. And I caused a lot of heartache in my own life. Um, I was constantly restless. Um, I started to grow resentments, and um, I was very violent. I joined the wrestling team when I was um, about 13. And I find myself uh, joining other peer groups. Um, I started teaching myself drums on the side um, and, and just going my own way. Um, around that same time, at 13, I started smoking cigarettes, um, hanging out with a different crowd, and I was drinking and smoking pot. Um, and the devil tried to lie to me um, about many things, including my sexuality, um, including um, that I wasn't good enough, um, and told me that I would always be in bondage. And, and I kind of liked it at the time. I, I thought that it was cool to be an outcast. It was cool to be a misfit. Um, but deep down, I really, really wanted to fit in, and I wanted to fit into the people that loved me, but I wouldn't let them love me. So, <clears throat> so my anger grew, and my, my violence became kind of um, uncontrollable, which, which landed me in jail um, when I was, when I was uh, 15, um, about to turn 16. And um, for the next four years of high school, I ended up um, continuing to dabble in drugs, drinking excessive, excessively, and glorifying myself um, while chasing escape from the person that I felt like I was. And that was a really scary feeling because I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to glorify myself. And at the same time, I hated myself. And I resented myself. And I didn't want to be in the same room with myself alone. So I constantly um, searched for attention from social groups and from my music and from anything that would give me relief from myself. Um, including drugs and alcohol. So throughout high school, I, I left home. I lived with girlfriends. I lived with friends um, for most of my high school career. And um, by that time, I, I, had, I had really kind of grown into my, into my skill of music. Um, I chased the world and all the experiences that, that it had, um, playing music in bands and um, with uh, different groups. Um, 
you know, when I, when I left home, when I left my parents' house, um, all those things that I had been sheltered from living in a good Christian home, I realized, um, you know, what they were, and, and it was new to me, and so I chased those things. And, uh, you know, they, they took a hold of my heart, and, and they became a huge idol in my life, you know, and I, I had roots of Christianity, and I knew, you know, who God was, but I didn't know him. I didn't have a relationship with him. And so I continued to drink, and I continued to chase drugs, and um, it became a crutch. Um, going to college, I couldn't attend class sober. Um, I, I didn't make it one day sober there through college, and um, constantly kept telling myself lies, and I started to spiral out. And that same year, um, that same year, I realized that I was going down some dark roads, and I tried to um, restore things with my, my birth father. Um, and I started to feel God knocking on the door, but uh, the drugs kept calling me back. Um, one night, one night I lost control of myself and um, severely injured a police officer, and it resulted in a prison sentence. Um, and so at 18, I saw things that I'd only heard about and seen in movies, and um, I was in a constant state of um, readiness and on edge, and. Um, really just ultimate fear, fear of where I was, fear of who I was, and um, I started to seek Jesus. Um, he started to become my comfort while I was in there, and I started to be able to trust, um, trust that there was someone looking out for me, and through that whole time, my, you know, my parents prayed for me, and they continued to reassure me that, you know, God had it, God had my situation, and that I was going to be okay, but as soon as I was free, he stopped being my main focus. I didn't need him anymore because I got this now. I'm free. So in my attempt to reclaim my freedom, I really put myself in more bondage. Um, and it would get worse and worse. I got arrested, arrested um, over six times. Um, my drug use went deeper, and my mind got further attacked by Satan. Um, so. I started seeking a lot of different things. I started seeking um, other religions, and I latched a hold of, of people and seeking anything that could save me other than Jesus. Um, and, and it took me into a place of um, where I became very egotistical, very self-centered. And uh, you know, I, I, started to, I started to have repercussions of that, and um, I, I didn't really feel like there was a way out. Uh, finally, finally something happened that's going to be the biggest blessing of my life, and that's when I found out that I was going to be a father. And uh, at that time, you know, I think I, I got worse for a little while because I was so scared that, you know, how could, how could I raise a child when I can't even take care of myself? Um, and so I white knuckled and went buckled down and I started up a company. Um, I worked really hard, but the, the only purpose that I really felt in my life was to work and to drink. And that took me down a, a bad road of, again, self-fulfillment um, until my daughter was, was born and it completely changed my perspective when I saw her. And I realized that there's gotta be something more. Um, I started to see the bigger picture. So, so around that time, um, around that time, I tried to be sober for a little while, and I, uh, I, I, I worked through a lot of things, but still wasn't putting God first. And um, it came to a head, to the point where um, I was drinking myself to death and um, hurt a police officer again, and. Uh, and that, that happened on um, the night before Father's Day. So when I woke up and I was in that jail cell, I realized that, um, that something needs to change. And I picked up a Bible. And I started reading the, the, the New Testament. And it was that same time that my mom came to me and told me about the fix. Um, and my family had talked to me about going to the ranch a long time ago, um, which is another men's house where they, um, it's Christ-centered. But I wasn't ready, and um, this time I was ready. And it's funny how God will meet you right where you're at when you 
when you are really ready to surrender, he'll be there, you know, to lift that burden off of you. And so I, that's what I did. I got on my knees and I surrendered. And I, I gave my life to the Lord in the jail cell. And then later I would give my life um, to Christ in front of my brothers at the fix. Um, since then I was baptized and I've had such a change come over me where I didn't know peace like this before. You know, I used to seek after um, drugs and alcohol to try and find my peace, to try and find my center. I would do psychedelics to find God, but really he's, he's right there waiting for you to lay those burdens down so that you can pick up his yoke. And I found out that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And the weights that I had on my, on my shoulders, the, the shame and the guilt that I used to have, he took from me. And I have to let him take it daily. It's not, it's not a one-off thing. It's something you have to do daily. And I have to continually pick up my cross. But every time I do, he's there and he meets me where I'm at. And so I'm just happy to be in front of you guys to say that Jesus is the fix. He is the fix. Sorry. I'm just super proud of him. You know, I'm excited. Um, it's just amazing how, how God, God works in our lives. And, um, you know, I can't wait to see what happens. I know Xander's got a calling in his life. And, you know, just the, the music in itself is he's anointed in that. And just, uh, you know, speaking and, and, and the um, empathy he has for his, his brothers in the fix. And, um, you know, just pray. I, I believe that everybody that comes to the fix in some way is called called to full time ministry, and I, I I pray for that. You know, Amen. They get mad. I'm like, you're called to be a pastor. No, I'm not. <laughs> um, let's let's get James up here. Amen. <laughs> amen. And and I, I do. I can say. Um, that, that Christy, you know, he, if it wasn't for you guys, you know, this, this guy wouldn't be, you know, amen. Y'all go out to the 99 and I'm just, the story, you know, relentless pursuit, amen. And I, I appreciate that because, um, man, that's what I pray for, that, that God will send people that will um, relentlessly go after the lost and broken, the ones that we know that God's got a calling in their life, but they got to break free. And this is, this is James, and um, man, you know, when he first came in, we were talking about it. He gets mad because we had a conversation, and it was a long conversation, wasn't it? <laughs> but I had a conversation with the other day, and, the, uh, you know, it's just, it's just crazy, you know. God is working in his life and his heart, and, um, you know, I'm excited for him. We, we see great potential for leadership in him, amen, and see that God's um, really shaping and molding in that direction. And, again, excited to see where that leads. So I'll let you talk, okay? You ready? Amen. Here you go. Can y'all hear me? <laughs> All right. Um, I'm a little nervous, so when I'm nervous, I uh, read the words. So I'm going to read a little bit and then a little bit more. And then when I get calm, I'll talk. Uh, so this is a song um, about thanksgiving to God for his enduring mercy. It's uh, 136. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. O oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. Yeah. To him who alone does great wonders, for his mercy endures forever. To him who by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endures forever. To him who laid out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endures forever. To him who made great lights, for his mercy endures forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endures forever. The moon and stars to rule by night, for his mercy endures forever. To him who struck Egypt in their firstborn, for his mercy endures forever. And brought out Israel from among them, for his mercy endures forever. With a strong hand and with an outstretched arm, for his mercy endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea in two, for his mercy endures forever and made Israel pass through the midst of it, for his mercy endures forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea, for his mercy endures forever. To him who led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endures forever. To him who struck down great kings, for his mercy endures forever. 
and slew famous kings, for his mercy endures forever. Sihon, king of the Amorites, for his mercy endures forever. And Og, king of Bashan, for his mercy endures forever. And gave their land as a heritage, for his mercy endures forever. A heritage to Israel, his servant, for his mercy endures forever. Who remembered us in our lowly state, for his mercy endures forever. And rescued us from our enemies, for his mercy endures forever. Who gives food to all flesh, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of heaven, for his mercy endures forever. Um, praise God. Uh, glory to God. Um, not too long ago, I was broken. Um, I was at death's door. The devil almost had me. Uh, I was ready to give up. Um, yeah, my foolishness, it cost me my family. Um, my sin and pride were about to lead me uh, down a journey of shame, anger, uh, fear, loneliness, hopelessness. Um, it almost cost me my life. Uh, I was of the world. Um, you know, I was a partaker of sin. Uh, you glorify God or you glorify the devil. I wasn't glorifying God at that time. Um, I would do as much drugs as I could fit in a syringe, uh, and I would do whatever to get them drugs to numb the pain and the shame. Um, you know, uh, I was in a living hell, um, but before I get to the, that, um, I'll go back to the beginning. Uh, kind of paint a picture, tell my story. Thank y'all for allowing me to. Um, I had a normal upbringing. My two siblings, one of them is back there, Hannah, uh, and I were raised by parents who love God. Um, shout out to mama. We lived in the country and uh, we drove 30 to 45 minutes to church as much as we could, which when I was a little boy, that felt like eight days a week. Um, I can remember jamming, I don't know if y'all know this, some of the older guys, Grits and DC Talk in the shed out back. Remember that, Hannah? That was all right. Uh, so I knew the word. I knew, uh, I knew the story of Jesus, Adam and Eve, all that. Went to vacation Bible school. Um, I'm not sure when it happened, but I got a rebellious spirit on me. I guess maybe being the middle child, whatever it was. Uh, but I had this just... Rebellious about 12 is when I can remember it. Um, you know, and I would rebel against all authority just to rebel against authority. I wasn't hungry, I wasn't in the streets, I didn't have to steal to eat. I never went without, but I wanted just to do the bad thing, just to do the bad thing. And uh, that would be a life, uh, a journey over the next 20 years about not submitting to authority that I uh, thank God finally overcame uh, in the last couple months. Um, I'll get to that in a minute. So I, when I was 10, the devil tried to get me. Uh, I was ejected from a car, and this was my first, uh, my introduction to narcotics when I was 10. I was ejected from a car on the interstate, um, going to see my grandparents, rest in peace, Grandpa. Um, he got to know the Lord this year uh, before he passed in April, thanks to my, to my mom and my sister, and it was a blessing. Um, I miss him, but I get to see him again. Um, we hit a pile of rubble on the right side of the interstate. Uh, we were going fast. I know we were going fast because mama was driving. Uh, and look, amen. I'm just speaking truth up here. All right. <laughs> it was not her fault though. And this is some like foreshadowing a drunk driver actually like forced us into a lane and you know, we did like that and I just took my seatbelt off and I got ejected and it was not a good thing, it was very painful, and I remember thinking I was in hell, because I was standing up, and I set up when the like, change of environment happened, uh, and I saw lights on the telephone pole, and then boom, it was black, and my whole body hurt, and it was a lot of trauma, and a lot of pain, and the dust was in the wounds, and I remember my, I was walking, I was thinking, I was saying out loud, I, I, this is what I remember, you know, am I in hell, am I dead, and my mom came running through the dust, I'll never forget the look on her face. And, um, and then we looked down and you can see the blood stain on my shirt. And uh, that's when I collapsed. Uh, my mom is one of the best nurses on earth, if not the best. Uh, 
I believe she graduated four years before that, uh, four to be ready for that. Uh, if for nothing else, it was for that moment. Um, and she kept me alive. And uh, I went through that and I got on uh, pain pills. Uh, but not like, I'm not at 10, like, you know, fiending. I was just, that's when I got introduced to them and I was like, oh, there's something that can take your pain away. Um, but we made it through that and uh, I wish I could tell you I got it then. Uh, I didn't, I felt like uh, because of that, I was I had resentments towards God because of that, because it messed my body up pretty bad. Um, but not bad enough to really affect anything, but like it's visual, it was all in my mind. Um, I made it worse than it was. I will continue to do that through life. Uh, but I thought I was 10 foot tall and bulletproof. Um, I remember 12, I was at vacation Bible school and you know, Eminem was out, he was hot back then. I had my hair dyed, I was, you know, Jinkos, Doc Martens. Uh, I got caught selling unedited copies of the Marshall Mathers MP at Vacation Bible School. And uh, I can remember being scared that I was in trouble. I was angry for being told on, but more what I remember was being defiant and proud that I got away with the money, that uh, even though they knew I didn't turn it over. And that feeling fueled my, my rebellion uh, and me running from God. That was the wiles of the devil uh, he, he shooting his fiery darts at me. And um, I fed off of that. Uh, then uh, my parents got divorced. And uh, I manipulated their brokenness and stood on their shoulders and pitted them against each other to feed my sin. I was young. I wasn't, I couldn't have gone to, I was 15, 16 and I was doing this. So, and I knew it. And, um, you know, I was sowing bad seeds and I'd reap them later. Uh, I feel bad for that. I'm sorry, mama. Uh, but uh, I, I, I manipulated that situation. I was, you know, full blown cokehead at 16. I was eating acids, doing lots of, lots of weed, drinking every day, partying, running from the law just rebellion in a state of rebellion with an evil spirit on me. Uh, that led to the next uh, year and a half of dying a couple times. Uh, I would do a funeral on ecstasy. It's, it's, I wasn't popping X and going to the funeral. I got pulled over on the way and I ate what I had. And I was in a room with 3,000 people that I grew up with and one of the sweetest uh, girls I'd ever known laying in the casket. And uh, when I walked by the, when I, you know, I was at the front of the procession walking by the body and I couldn't look at her. So I turned and saw the congregation and their faces were melting like ghouls. It was weird. Usually on ecstasy, everybody's happy, but this was demonic. And I went to reach out for my, for my dude and I collapsed right there in the, in the sanctuary. And, um, you know, my little brother was there, he witnessed that. I feel bad for that. Um, I feel bad for, you know, you know, disrespecting that moment um, and honoring her life. And I dishonored her life because uh, she was dear to me. Um, and then I went to the hospital and the charge nurse at the ER was mama. And she brought me out of that and loved me through that and didn't judge me through that and prayed. Uh, mama never stopped praying. Um, the shame and stuff I, I would hold on to because I didn't give it to Jesus until recently, but mama was there and she was praying. Don't ever stop praying, y'all. Uh, so after that, I, and this is where my story could have been awesome from a long time ago. I got saved uh, in 2006, February 15th. Um, at a church, Assemblies of God Church in West Monroe. Uh, I was in my house, uh, partied out. You know, a friend of mine had just been murdered. Uh, it was a dark, dark place. And I threw out all the Bibles. Um, I was, I, I, I had a lot of resentments towards God. And I remember like a road, not road, kind of like a road to Damascus moment. I had to get a Bible. I had to read. I was raised in church. I knew the word. It was like my lighthouse. I had to find the word of God, and all my sin kind of hit me at once, and I just was crying out to God to save me, save me, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 
And I went, and it was like one of them old Bibles you keep on the coffee table. It's about as big as this. And um, I just, I was just reading. I, and I had comfort. And the next day, one of my friends heard, uh, I guess you could see, and she invited me to church. I got saved. I gave my testimony there. And uh, where I messed up was I thought I had it. And I wanted to save all my partners. And, um, you know, I wasn't ready. I was on milk and not meat at that point. And I was vulnerable. I was impressionable. The devil knew it. My homies knew it. Um, it wasn't long before I had backslidden, and that would be 12 years of absolute turmoil. Um, went through and saw things that I hope nobody uh, ever has to, and I feel for anybody that, that has. Um, you know, to, to, to turn your back on God, there's a, that's a bad feeling. Um, to not be friends with the world, uh, to not be friends with God, to be just... It was horrible. It was, uh, it was bad. Um, but my mama never quit praying. And at this point, she had thousands of people praying, uh, probably millions. I mean, that's not an exaggeration. Um, through my sin and my rebellion, I went to prison for, um, I told you earlier about the DWI that caused the wreck. I went to prison for DWIs. Uh, got sentenced to 15 years in 2011. Uh, did 25 months, got out. Um, with a suspended sentence, made it like two weeks, and violated and was on the run. They, the courts know this, so I can say it. I came to Virginia uh, while I was on the run, and being on the run sucks. If you, got, if you sowed some bad seed and you got you to gotta reap it, it's going to happen, if, especially if you get saved. Go ahead and face it. Uh, you got to get that burden up off of you um, to move forward. Uh, yeah, the, hap the, the, the best I slept in that whole nine months was the night that they come and got me uh, at my dad's house and when they pulled up on me and locked me up, and I knew it was over. That's where I was going to be. So I went back to prison. Uh, and this story, I'm just sharing the prison story. I'm not glorifying that life at all. I, I, it's, prison's not good. It, um, if you got family and you can help them stay out of there, by all means. Do what you can, um, and don't stop praying. But I, my first rap sheet was getting out in 2021, and I called Mama, and, like, I think I got it down to 2020 by going to classes, and I was like, yo, Mom, this is it. You know, I'm a, this is, like, 2016. I'm like, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm going to play softball. I'm a football team. Hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. I'll get out. And uh, Mom's like, nope, nope. Now, my God. Uh, <laughs> she's like, uh, they're going to change your sister. I was like, Mama, it would take an act of Congress to give me a new sentence. Like, 90 days later, Louisiana Congress convened and changed the law, and it was retroactive, <laughs> and got, like, two years off my sentence. Amen, Mama? Yeah. <laughs> you mean, that's, I'm telling you, praise God. And that's, that's real-life miracle, yo. I'm telling you. And, uh, <laughs> and, man, what? And Mama, I love you. She never stopped praying. She invited me out to Virginia when I got out, and, uh, I'm a hard head, and I was like, Xander, I was like, I got this, and I didn't have it, man. And I had a lot of 12 years of running from God baggage, and um, it all came to a head about 10 months ago. Uh, that's when my family had to separate themselves from me. I was wild. I was uh, a danger to them, myself, everybody. Uh, I didn't have a moral compass. Um, the devil had me this close to having me for forever. And, uh, you know, the angels were still warring all around me. And uh, they never stopped because my people never stopped praying. Um, and, uh, you know, real quick, I want to read uh, something. It's Jeremiah 29, 11. It's a good one. Uh, hold on, I got it right now. I got to find the. It's, it's y'all know it. Okay, here we go. Uh, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Um, I stand on that. Uh, the promises of God, are they're unbreakable. No, you know, what's God's, no man can take. Um, and uh, like I said, I lost my family, and six months it went crazy. I was in the streets. Um, I was given to my addiction to the world. Uh, and I OD'd three times in May uh, on heroin. Um, 
not pleasant experience. Uh, all three of those, the last one I ended up on a respirator, uh, pulled the, when I came to, pulled the intubation tube out, uh, was just, just had some bad spirits on me, man. The Lord brought me through that. I got kidnapped by Miss Christy Chap's wife. It was an intervention. I say it was a kidnapping. And Miss Tina, wherever you're at, thank you. There you go, Tina. I appreciate that. And my sister one night. And yeah, yeah. And I was like, you know what? I, my hangover was a little bit gone. I was like, I'm good. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go. And they're like, no, no, you're not. You're gonna go to the fix. And I was like, all right. And uh, I went to the fix and um, one day at a time. And on my application, I put that I wanted to get clean. Uh, or I was going to go out and, and, you know, give myself to the world. I wanted to find God, or I was going to go shoot heroin until I died. And I honestly, I sought God, and I prayed, and I let him know that I wanted to see him, and he came to me. And my big thing was I had didn't think he would forgive me for what I had done and for turning my back the first time, and he did. Um, he did. Uh, amen. Um and I had this peace, and I still had some stuff. Sanctification is a process. Uh, it's, I'm still going through it, but I had this peace. I knew, uh, and certain little things, you know, will happen, and let me know that God is real. Uh, I'm trying to think of the words lost on me, but so I gave it to God. I built an altar of remembrance. Um, he accepted me back into His arms. Um, I pray a lot. I read my word a lot. Uh, oh, here it goes, Matthew 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Um, and in Romans 8, 28, for we know that uh, all things work out for good uh, to those who love God and are calling according to his purpose. It doesn't matter what I go through, what I've been through. At the end of the day, my soul is saved. And... Uh, no matter what happens, I'll, I'll be with Jesus and God and my grandpa in heaven forever. Uh, and I have a peace. Um, and now my mission is, you know, to help other guys get it right and to disciple and minister to them. Um, probably too long. Uh, for the time, I'm, uh, I love y'all. Seriously, thank y'all for y'all's prayers. It's Christy Chap. It means a lot. Amen. Two, two things make the devil flee. It's um, the blood of the lamb and the word of the testimony. Amen. Amen. And uh, it's, it's amazing. I'm so proud of James. Um, I know we got to wrap it up soon, but I just want to leave you uh, with a couple of thoughts. Um, you know, we, we all that are in the fix, including Fred, myself, and that's my wife, Jody. Stand up because she... No, amen. <laughs> amen. You, it, it, ministry with kids is rough, amen? And sometimes, you know, I get to come up on stage, and she's got to do everything else. And, um, man, I'm just so God that, glad that God gave me her, amen? Um, so anyway, I'm going to leave you with two thoughts um, as, as we get ready to, to do the altar call. I want to read a scripture um, about why uh, it was the fix. So, um, you know, years ago, I, I was, uh, you know, going through the same thing that these guys did, and I, I met a pastor, and he said, uh, he said, you know, you, you got to try Jesus. Jesus is the answer. You've tried everything else. There's a quote that C.S. Lewis has that we all have a hole that's shaped like God that only God can fill. Amen. And what you've been doing is filling, you know, Xander and, and Will and all these guys, we fill that hole with everything but God. And he's like, you need to, you need to find Jesus. And, and um, he, he read the scripture to me. He said, it was in John 5, 1 through 9. It says, sometimes later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now, there is a Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate, a pool where an aromatic is called um, Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here, a great number of disabled people used to lie there, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed, amen, the drug addicted, amen. Uh, one who was there had been invalid for 38 years, and that's how old I was when I came to Christ, amen. Um, he was lying there in, in, in a bad condition, and, and Jesus asked him, do you want to get well, amen. Do you want to get well? And the pastor looked at me and he said, I mean, you, you know, do you want to get well? Do, do you want to change your life? Is it, is it time for you to change um, your life? Um, the pastor pointed out that Jesus didn't ask him, you know, how he got that way, judged him. He didn't ask, um, you know, who did this to him? How did you get 
blind. He didn't blame the devil even. He didn't take pity on him. Um, he just asked one question, one powerful question, do you want to get well? And that's the question when we have the guys that call in and they're like, man, I'm struggling with drugs and alcohol. And it's the same answer with people that are struggling with other things. Amen. It's a crazy world right now. It's, it's insane. I mean, you know, it's just a lot going on. Um, but, but Jesus is there and he's asking the question, do you want to get well? And I looked at the pastor and I said, I, you know, I'm, I'm such a sinner. I've, I've, I'm just like these guys. Like, I love James. He's been through so much. He was selling CDs at ba vacation Bible school. And it's like, man, how could Jesus change our lives? Because we're so bad. Why? Why would he do that? And he read another scripture um, to me. And it's in John 9, 1 through 3. And it says, now Jesus passed by his... Uh, and, now, now, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth, and his disciple asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man or his parents sinned, but the works of God should be revealed through him. Amen. And the, and the pastor looked at me and said, The reason that you want to get your life straight is so that God can get the glory. Amen. So that God can get the glory. And it's amazing because I look at these guys right here. I look at all the guys out there, and I, I mean, God gets the glory, right? Amen. And, and, and today, you know, as we get ready to close, I, I love this because, you know, I was listening to the worship and amen. Y'all got some amazing worship. Like the presence of God was here today. But I, I just look at these guys who, who were worshiping the devil, who were running after everything but, but Christ. And, and they're up here glorifying God. Amen. And, and I tell them all the time that they can reach people that I can't reach. Right. And, and I'm excited for that. And so today, as we get ready to close, I'm going to invite some of the guys up. But if y'all want some prayer, um, and, and, and you may be struggling with something, because I know if he can break our chains, he can break your chains. You may know somebody that's um, struggling with drugs or alcohol, or you may not know Christ. In fact, that's an important question. Is there anybody here today that would say, Pastor Sweezy, I don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Because I'm going to invite you forward. We're going to stand up here, and we want you to be able to give your life to Christ. That's what changed us. Was that? That's what fixed us. Was that relationship with with Christ? And um, so anyway, um, we're going to be up here. Um, Brent, why don't you come on up here? Lee, come on up here. Um, Roy, if you want to come up here, you guys, we're, we're going to stand up here. We want to be able to pray for you. The altar's going to be open too. So, you know, I, I love seeing um, that change happen. Amen. So let's go ahead and uh, worship.
Shout a praise, he is worthy. Amen. 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 If you can't get excited about someone finding new identity in Christ, then you don't realize what you could have been, and you've forgotten what you once were. But thank God, thank God for Jesus. I know that's and sometimes that's a simple saying, but thank God for Jesus. And the, his, he loved us so much that he bankrupt heaven to come and do everything he could to initiate relationship with us. I'm just grateful today for what I could have been and what he has done in, in my life. We need, we need to thank God every day. We need to thank God every day. Every day. Every day every day for who we are and what he is doing in us what he's doing in us don't ever stop praying I think we've heard that theme all day long don't ever stop praying for those that don't yet know him Kelly I think about all those texts all those texts we've shared these, these mamas love their babies June I think about all those those connection cards how many hundreds of times we read on that, please, please pray for my son James. Hundreds and hundreds of those cards. Prayer is real. Yes. Prayer is real. And prayer changes things. Amen. Amen. We're gonna, I'm going to give you opportunity to bless this ministry. So if our ushers would prepare one more time to service. We have a keyword set up today so you can give also to the fix. Through smart giving. We can throw that, that phone number back up there again, please. The keyword is fix, F-I-X. If you want to designate or if you want to give through text to give, I'm, I'm gonna wait for it to get up there this time. Okay, there it is. Let's throw that uh, that that's the that's the phone number. You can text a dollar amount to that phone number and put in the keyword fix, F-I-X, that will make sure that all the funds go directly to them. Let's listen. These people. This ministry is changing lives, okay? This is changing. You're talking about, you know, you might have a missions heart. Well, let me tell you something. This is, this is so, this is to me such, such real missions. It's not on a foreign soul somewhere. It's right here with us. But, but thank God for the opportunity and for a ministry that, that's taking people right where they are and seeing God in them, seeing God in them. And, uh, and I, I think you should take opportunity to, to sow into this ministry. We're going to bless them today. Father, thank you today for the privilege to give. We pray for Pastor Sweezy and all these young men. God, we just declare victory, forever victory in their lives. And as the, in the future, even as the enemy would still try to come back in, as he does in all of us every day, God, we recognize his tactics, yet we declare victory in their lives by the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony. May they keep declaring Jesus. May they keep declaring Jesus. Lord, thank you for this ministry. We just ask, Lord, that you'll, you'll bless it today as we sow into it today. Thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. We'll lead us in another course of that. Uh, we're going to receive this offering. When we're done, you're dismissed. Thank you so much for being here today. We love you.
Once again, guys, thank you all for being here today. Stop by, stop by their table in the lobby. They have a product table out there. Stop by, check them out. God bless you. We'll see you next time.